Hello! In this animated video, we'll look at reporter genes, which are genes that can report the spatiotemporal dynamics of gene expression. The main purpose of the reporter gene assay is to investigate the promoter of a gene and whether that particular promoter is active and how that promoter is regulated. So obviously, we have a gene promoter and this could be a promoter of our gene of interest, let's say gene X. And in order to understand how much transcription happens from this promoter, we need a reporter gene that would help us to visualize the overall uh, rate of transcription from this promoter. So often the reporter gene is a GFP, which is easy to visualize. But now let me tell you that there could be different modes by which we can visualize our reporter gene. The most common one is GFP, where this GFP gene sequence gives rise to GFP protein and it fluoresces, which can be detected. So overall, it's a fluorescence-based detection. It's very popular these days. There could be also enzymatic de detection, where under the promoter, we have the LAG-Z gene, which codes for beta-galactosidase. Now, if we give substrate, it might lead to production of colored products. And that's an enzyme-based colorimetric reporter. There could be also luciferase-based reporter, which is a bioluminescence-based reporter. It encodes for a luciferase enzyme, which can ultimately give rise to bioluminescence, and that can be detected. So there are different strategies by which we can visualize the promoter output. So for simplicity, let's talk about the GFP-based reporters for a moment and try to understand whether we can use it for biomedical research and how we can use it for biomedical research. Now, initial days, the LAG-Z reporter was very popular. It provides the information about tissue level expression. For example, here you can see in a fly embryo, this particular gene is expressed in a patterned fashion. But it doesn't have a really great resolution. We don't have a cellular level resolution at this point. And that is why fluorescence reporters are really interesting because they not only provide <coughs> cellular and molecular level uh, resolution, but also they can be uh, done on, let's say, live specimen. So you can track these gene expression dynamics over a long time. That's a big advantage. Now let's talk about what questions can be answered using reporter gene assays. You can ask that is my gene of interest is expressed in a particular tissue or a cell type. You can also ask that if my gene of interest is expressed more or less upon a drug treatment or let's say a pathological situation. One can ask that if the particular promoter is a strong promoter or a weak promoter. All these questions can be answered using reporter assay. Let's try to understand how. So let's talk about whether our particular promoter is tissue specific or a cell type specific. So in this case, we clone our uh, reporter gene underneath the promoter in expression vector and then transfect that into different cell types. In this case, we have taken a epithelial cell, neuronal cell and let's say a fibroblast. And our goal is to monitor the GFP fluorescence because the GFP fluorescence would tell us about the presence of or the expression of these genes. We noticed in this hypothetical experiment that the GFP fluorescent is vis uh, visualized in epithelial and fibroblast cell but not the neuron. That means our gene of interest is selectively expressed in epithelial and fibroblast cells and it's not expressed in neuronal cell types. Next we can also ask whether my gene of interest is expressed more or less upon a pathological condition. So in this case, we transfect our cell line with our reporter construct just to visualize the transcription of uh, gene X and try to understand how promoter of gene X is activated. Then we subdivide these cell cultures into two groups. One group is treated with a vehicle and another group is treated with a vehicle plus the drug. Now then we can analyze the fluorescence and plot their intensity. Now, if there is more fluorescence intensity, that would mean the transcription is more. In this case, in this hypothetical situation, we can see drug X lead to increase in the transcription 
of the gene X because the fluorescence intensity is more than the vehicle treated condition. So it gives us an instant idea about the gene expression under a particular physiological or pharmacological situation. Lastly, we can ask, is the particular promoter a strong promoter or a weak promoter? And that can be done by these reporter assays. So generally, this is a promoter region for our gene and this is the gene body. Now the RNA uh, polymerase and the overall initiation complex would bind to the promoter and it would lead to the transcription. In this case, we are going to take the promoter and instead of putting the gene body sequence, we are going to put the GFP sequence underneath. Obviously, this G GFP sequence would give rise to GFP protein. Now, let's say in case of promoter A, we have this many transcripts, but in case of promoter B, we have less transcripts. So, less GFP would be produced and if we quantify the fluorescence with a fluorescence microscope, we can overall understand how much or how less the expression is and ultimately we can plot graphs for promoter A and promoter B to understand whether it is a weak or a strong promoter. Obviously a strong promoter would lead to more transcription, right? So promoter A in this particular example is stronger than promoter B. So now we understand how we can use reporters to answer various scientific questions. Now. Let me tell you that in these days, we can use GFP-based fluorescence reporters to understand cell signaling activity. Let's say this is a cell and <clears throat> here we have a promoter for a target gene of a signaling pathway. Now, underneath that promoter, we can put the reporter gene and this is a signaling reporter right now. So whenever the particular pathway is active, we should see the GFP fluorescence. So when we see GFP fluorescence, it would tell us that the pathway is on. And when we don't see GFP fluorescence or low GFP fluorescence, that would tell us the pathway is off. So ultimately, the GFP becomes a readout of the on or off status of a signaling pathway. And this is how we can track the dynamics of cell signaling pathway in real time. Other than that, there are also activity-based reporters. So let's say when a neuron is active and it's firing, there are certain GFP based reporters or uh, certain receptor, uh, certain kind of reporters which can report us about the calcium levels in the neuron or let's say a voltage change inside the neuron. If you want to learn more about these neuronal activity reporters, you can click on the I button to know more. Anyway, you can get notes for these particular topic in my Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, page. The link is provided in the description. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Do let me know in the comment whether it's useful. You can support my channel in Patreon. If you're an Indian user, you can uh, use Bhim UPI to support my channel. My courses are present in Unacademy. You can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. If you wish to connect with me via social media, this is my social media handle. And all the links are provided uh, in the description. Thank you. See you in next time.